Welcome to the tenth lecture of the course Discrete Time Markov Chains and Poisson Processes. So, just recall that in the last couple of lectures, we have talked about heating probability. So, we defined the heating time. So, what we did is that we take a set A, which is a subset of the state space, and then we define the random variable T A by infimum of the set n greater than equals to 0 such that x n belongs to A and this random variable we called as heating time, heating time to A, heating time to A and then we have basically um, understood that this is basically nothing but if I start from outside A then when at what time step for the first time I entered into the state A, the chain enters into the state A or if I am inside the state A, if I am starting inside the state A, set A, then this is nothing but 0. Okay? We have understood that T A, uh, T T T A will be 0 if starting, starting uh, from A and it is basically nothing but first time first time after 0 after 0 uh, when the chain the markov chain enters the state the set a if we are starting if we are starting uh, starting uh, outside A. Okay, if I, we are starting from outside A, then that was the definition. Then we have seen how we can calculate the probability that H i, which we define to be P i T uh, A less than infinity. This way we have defined or more formally as we told that, told that we will write it is nothing but heating probability that hit hit A. Okay? Probability that hit A and we have seen that how to calculate this kind of probabilities at least for two examples and the basic idea through the theorem was that we can able to write a system of linear equation involving H i's and then we have to solve that system of linear equation and we have to look for the minimal non-zero, non-negative solution, minimal non-negative solution of that system of equations. Okay? So, after that we did and then we basically talked about one example where we model the gambling and we generally call it as a gambling model or gambler ruin problem and we try to find out what is the probability that gambler, so a gambler who is starting with uh, rupee i go back, go back home empty handed. Okay? that probability we try to find out. So, that is basically nothing but was the probability that what is the probability that hitting 0 starting from i that is basically we try to find out. Okay? So, now we will see the another example in this lecture and the example goes like that consider the Markov chain with state space S given by this and the transition probability matrix given by this, transition probabilities given by this. This is of course, the one step transition probabilities. So, what is the probability is given? See, A A P 0 0 is 1. So, the state 0 is basically coming to 0 in one step only. So, once you are in state 0, you cannot come out of the state 0. What about the other, other values? The other value go like this for general i except 0, general i that with a uh, probability p i we move towards left. So, from i to i plus 1 I can go with probability p i, I can go with probability p i and from i to i minus 1 I can go with probability q i, okay? with probability q i. And naturally in this case we are assuming that p i plus q i has to be 1 because from i I can go only to i plus 1 and only to i minus 1 that actually tells us that p i plus q i equals to 1 or if we know that p i plus q i equals to 1 that basically mean that from i I can only go to uh, i plus 1 or i, I minus 1 in one step. Okay? Along with we are considering p i is strictly greater than 0 and p i is also 
less than 1 and so that basically tells that p i lies between 0 and 1 that basically tells that q i is also lies between 0 and 1 ok, q i is also lies between 0 and 1. Now, uh, now the thing is that so that means from i with some positive probability i can go from go to i plus 1 in one step and that positive probability is pi and from i i can go to i minus 1 in one step uh, with some positive probability and that positive probability is qi okay similarly from i minus 1 i can go to i in with probability q i plus 1 and here i have i plus 2 and the probability of moving to this one is p i plus 1 ok. So, that way the chain process and there is an interesting interpretation of this say chain and the interpretation is as follows. This chain can be used to model the population size of an evolving population. What does this mean? This mean as follows. See suppose at some time some point of time the pop a particular population has i uh, individuals, a particular population has i individuals. Then this model tells that well from i the population size can increase to i plus 1 in one step or decrease to i minus 1 in one step. So, it will increase if a new baby born in that population and the probability of that probability of new born is p i when the population current population size is i or it will decrease to i minus 1. So, that means one individual will die and then from i I will go to i minus 1 and the probability of dying is q i when the initial uh, initially we have uh, currently we have i individuals in the population ok. When currently we have i individuals in the population then probability of die is q i, probability of born is p i ok. And notice that we have written i here. So, this says that probability of born or probability of die may depend on the current size of the population ok. From i when I am going to i plus 1 it is p i, when I going to i minus 1 it is q i. Similarly, from i plus 1 when I am moving to i minus 2 it is p uh, i plus 1 and i plus 1 when I am moving to i it is q i plus 1 ok. So, the transition probabilities depend on the uh, population size. Just right now just compare it with the gambler ruin problem. First compare this chain with the gambler ruin problem and in case of the gambler ruin problem you see that we have the scenario like we have some i minus 1 uh, i, i plus 1 in between and then I have n. So, in both side basically it was closed, in both side it was closed and not only that in case of the gambler ruin problem that uh, moving from i to i plus 1 or uh, i plus 1 to i plus 2 are same. So, winning probabilities were same in case of the gambler ruin problem, but in this case this probability depends on the population size ok. So, in case of the gambler ruin problem, in case of the gambler ruin problem of course, uh, this uh, I have two uh, state which are absorbing in both the sides and in between we have some states and in case of the gambler ruin problem moving towards right is uh, the probability of moving towards right is always same that was p we have taken and moving towards left that we have taken to be q and that in end two points n two states are basically absorbing states ok. But in this case we have make some amount of generalization in the sense that well this 0 is still absorbing, but in between when we are moving the probability may depend on what is the current size of the population, what is the current state that the probability depends on that one point is that and another point is that in this case we are terminating this chain at the state n ok or, or, or basically we are we are I mean that maximum uh, value of the state is n when we n reach n we uh, that basically mean that we, we, we uh, achieve our fortune achieve our targeted fortune. But in this case when I am talking about the population that the state moves on or state can be very very large it is very very large. So, it can go up to infinity ok. So, that is basically two changes we have made 
over the gamla ruin problem and when we made that that model is called birth and death model because it can be used to model the population size of an evolving population it can be used to model uh, the population size of an evolving population okay so in this case what kind of probabilities we may ask so the probabilities we may ask is that what is the probability that if a population started with i i i individuals it will reach the state zero that means it will extinct okay and once the population is extinct that means no individuals is alive so that population will not start again okay the population will not start again that is the basic uh, one of the assumption of this model so that's why the state zero is basically returning to zero with probability one so, so once there is no alive alive person alive individual in the population it will not uh, it cannot actually increase the size of the population but if there is any i or i greater than strictly greater than zero population is there then it may increase or it may decrease in one step it may increase by one pop one individual in one step it may decrease by one individual okay so that natural question now is this one that what is the probability that starting with i individuals the population becomes extinct so population starting from here what is the probability that i hit zero okay i hit zero and hit zero means hit zero for the first time that's it uh, if i hit zero in finite time i am done the population is extinct okay so let us try to solve this so if i try to solve this again i have to write this set of linear equations and uh, in this case you see that hi is basically as we have denoted it by this one so in this case my a set is again singleton zero a set is again singleton 0 so writing hi 0 instead of writing hi 0 i am just writing hi in this case again okay so using the our theorem if i am already in 0 that means hitting time is finite i am already in 0 the hitting time is 0 hitting time is finite so h 0 is 1 okay so hitting time is finite hitting, hitting time is 0 so the probability that hitting time is 1 uh, hitting time is finite is 1 when I am starting from 0. So, that is why h 0 is 1 I have. Now, for any general state what will happen in one step I can go to i plus 1 or i minus 1. So, h i can be written as uh, uh, a p i times p i p i times h i plus 1 plus q i times h i minus 1. So, that is what I have written here when, uh, from i in one step I can go to i plus 1 or i minus 1. So, going to i plus 1 is p i the probability of going to i plus 1 is p i. So, p i times uh, h i plus 1. So, as if I am now here uh, from here I have to reach 0 I have to find out that probability. Okay? Similarly, in uh, another possibility is that from i I can go to q i and uh, if I am key here then from here I have to reach 0. So, that that contribution comes here okay, that contribution comes here. So, that way it proceed and this is true for i equals to 1, 2, 1, uh, 3, 4, so on so forth. Now, the rest of the process is just simple uh, just similar to uh, that of the uh, gambler's ruin problem okay, that of the gambler's ruin problem we try to write this equation in terms of uh, you know difference equation. So, we have done exactly that that because we have this p i plus q i equals to 1 what I can write is that I can incorporate here p i plus q i and then basically uh, that p i terms we, we, we collect in this side and q i terms we collect in this side and then we have this particular expression. Now, if I call this quantity to be u i then this quantity is nothing but u u i plus 1 right. If this quantity is u i then this part quantity is u i plus 1. So, this implies that the same equation I can write as p i u i plus 1 is equals to q i u i. Okay? This equation I can write in this manner if I take this quantities u i this in inside the bracket quantities u i then basically this the inside the bracket quantities u i plus 1. So, this particular equal this particular equation I can write in this particular form ok exactly that is what I have written here uh, taking u i equals to this 
and then I can use the recurrence recurrence formula to, to reduce the index i. So, now from here u i is nothing but q i divided by p i multiplied by u i. Now, instead of u i again I can able to write from, from, from this equation itself if I put i equals to if I put i equals to i minus 1 what I get is that it turns out to be u i then q i minus 1 divided by p i minus 1 u i minus 1. So, if I plug in it here what I get is that q i q i minus 1 divided by p i p i minus 1 times u i minus 1. Then again in u i minus 1 can be written as q i minus 2 divided by p i minus 2 u i minus 3 and then again I, I replace this quantity by this uh, sorry u i minus 2 again I replace this quantity by this and I can go on this manner still I reach 1 still I reach 1 still I reach u u 1 and then what I get is basically nothing but what I get is basically nothing but this product multiplied by u 1 ok this product multiplied by u 1. So, now uh, the thing is that uh, let us call this whole quantity to be gamma i. Let us call this whole quantity to be gamma i. So, we have this expression. So, finally, what we have is that well u i plus 1 can be written as gamma i u 1. Finally, I have this one u i plus 1 can be written as u i plus gamma 1. Now, uh, let us look into uh, this thing that what is the sum of u 1 to u i that same thing we did in case of the gambler ruin problem also we add some equations exactly that is what I am now going to do. If I add u 1 to u i because of this form this sum terms cancels out and finally, I am left with u naught minus h i h naught minus h i. Okay? So, this is very easy to see because uh, in this case you see that u 1 is h naught minus h 1 u 2 is h 1 minus h 2 and so on u i is h i minus 1 minus h i. So, when you add them up basically this h 1 h 1 cancel h 2 cancel with u in u 3 we have h h 2 that cancels with that and then finally, this h i minus 1 cancels with u i in u i minus 1 there is the h i minus 1 it cancels with that finally, I am left with h naught here and minus h i here. So, that is what I have written here h naught minus h i here. Okay? So, now so that means basically from here I can write h i from here I can write h i to be h naught minus u u 1 u 2 so on so forth u uh, i. Okay? This way I can able to write. Now, what is the value of h naught? The value of h naught is given to be 1. Okay? Value of h naught is given to be 1. So, that means I just replace this h naught with 1 here. And then what I did? I use this relationship. I use this relationship and I write instead of u 1. So, u 1 I write u 1, u 2 I write gamma gamma 1 times u 1 then u 3 I write gamma 2 times u 2 uh, sorry u 1 gamma 2 times u 1 u 4 I write gamma 3 times u 1 and so on so forth finally u i I can write gamma i minus 1 times u 1. So, once I write this thing that I have written from here once I write this thing I just I can I can if I call e gamma naught equals to 0 then I write that I have gamma naught here. So, gamma naught plus gamma 1 plus gamma 2 up to gamma 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 i plus i minus 1 I have this sum multiplied by u 1. Okay? I have so basically what we have done we have again write the difference equation and from the difference equation we get this solution we get this solution for some u 1 and we know what is the expression of u 1 u 1 is basically h naught minus h 1 u naught basically nothing but h naught minus h 1. Now, can I can I get the value of u 1 to write the uh, write the uh, explicit solution of h i. Let us discuss that. To discuss the precise solution of this system of linear equation we reach to this one. Now, 
uh, suppose suppose what can happen there are two possibilities now see here the i can take value anything like uh, 1 uh, 2 3 so on so forth it actually increases okay so i can take any values and if i have a very large value of i so i have a very large summation here so that's why we have to look into this summation okay we have to look into the summation we have to look into the summation gamma i i runs from 0 to infinity this summation we have to look into now this summation there are two possibilities one possibility is this one is infinity another possibility is this one is less than infinity keep in mind this quantity has to be greater than 0 and the reason being that well that 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 gamma i is basically product of some probabilities and then ratio of the products of some probabilities so gamma these quantities are all greater than 0 so product will be greater than 0 and so division will also be greater than 0 okay so each gamma i is greater than 0 so i have the summation of gamma i is also strictly greater than 0 there is no problem with that but there is problem with the fact that whether the summation gamma i is finite or it is infinite what will happen if it is infinite if it is infinite then uh, that means that uh, this quantity I can make as large as I want by taking a large value of i. Okay? That sum I can make uh, as large as, as I want uh, by taking a large value of i. And if this quantity is very big, then this quantity will be negative. 1 minus summation gamma i multiplied by u1 will be negative for any uh, either will be negative or it will be greater than 1. Uh, uh, for any value of e1 except 0. So, uh, what I am trying to say is that if e1 is less than 0 and if this quantity is true, then hi will be greater than 1 for for large for very large very large value of i. Okay? And that hi value is not permissible because hi is best finally is a probability. So, hi has to lies between 0 and 1. Okay? hi has to lies between 0 and 1. Similarly, if I take u1 positive, then hi will be negative for very large, very large i. Okay? For very large i, uh, it will be positive. It will be it will be negative, and that is again not not permissible. That is again not permissible. So what that means can happen that if summation gamma i is finite, then this condition force me to take u1 to be zero. Okay, u1 cannot be negative because if u1 is negative, then hi is greater than zero. That is not permissible. If u1 is positive, then hi is less than zero. That is also not permissible because hi is a probability. It has to lies between zero and one. Okay, so uh, so so to enforce this one for all values of i, hi lies between zero and one. To enforce this one, I can only choose u r u1 to be zero if I take if I have that summation gamma i is infinite okay? and that tells that h i has to be 1 for all i. Okay? So, if gamma i if the sum of this quantity is infinite then h i is 1 with probability i and that says that if this quantity is infinite sum of this quantity is infinite then whatever the population size I start with the population will extinct. Uh, with time. Okay? Population will extend with time if the summation gamma i is infinite. Clear? Now, what will happen if summation gamma i is finite that I, we now need to discuss. When uh, this summation gamma i is finite, then you see that I can take gamma y, u1 to be greater than 0. Of course, negative is not possible. The reason being that if it is negative, then uh, this quantity is anyway positive, this sum is anyway positive. If u1 is negative, then this will be greater than 1, okay? 1 plus because u1 will be now negative. So, this will this will can be make positive in this case. Okay? So, it will be greater than 1. So, in, in this case, in this particular case, uh, u1 negative implies that hi is greater than 1. So, that is why negative u1 is not possible. Okay? Now, if u1 is positive, that is possible, 
provided that this h i lies between 0, this h i is, is, is lies between 0 and 1 and uh, h i is always less than 1 because this quantity is positive, u 1 is positive. So, this part is positive. So, it is 1 minus some positive quantity. So, this h i will be less than 1 will be less than 1 there is no problem if u 1 is positive and this quantity is finite will be less than 1 there is no problem with that. But uh, the condition I need to satisfy is that h i is strictly greater, greater than or equals to 0 h i is strict greater than equals to 0. So, this condition now I have to satisfy. Okay? Now, so that means that if gamma i is finite I can choose uh, positive u i I can choose positive u i provided this condition is true and this condition is nothing but this condition is equivalent to h i greater than equals to 0. Okay? h i greater than equals to 0 that actually give rise this condition. Now, if I simplify it, it basically tells that u 1 is less than or equals to 1 by uh, summation gamma j j equals to 0 to i minus 1. Okay? Uh, u i is less than u 1 is less than equals to this and this is true for has to be true for all i equals to 1, 2 and so on and so forth. So, that tells me that that tells me that because it has to be true for all i 1, 2 the so on and so forth. So, u 1 has to be less than or equals to 1 by summation gamma j j running from 0 to infinity because when I add up more values here this quantity will be small. So, u i has to be the small uh, smaller than the smallest of these quantities for defined values of i and the smallest of this quantity achieved when I take the sum up to infinity because e h gamma i is greater than is gamma j is greater than 0. Okay? So, u 1 has to be less than that. Now, uh, remember this minimal solution, minimal non-negative solution. Now, minimality says that I have to take that h i which is basically give me the minimal value and h i is minimum if u 1 is maximum and u 1 has to be less than equals to this and so u 1 the maximum value of u 1 permissible in this case is nothing but exactly this quantity. Okay? Because u 1 is less than equals to this, so the maximum value possible for u 1 is this one and when u 1 takes its maximum value, h i takes its minimum value. Okay? So, that is why we can for this minimality condition, minimal non-zero solution uh, to, to, to have the minimal non-zero solution, we need to take u 1 to be u 1 to be 1 by summation gamma i, i runs from 0 to infinity and this tells that h i is same as 1 minus uh, gamma naught to gamma uh, sum of gamma naught to gamma i minus 1 divided by summation gamma 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 i i runs from 0 to infinity. And when you uh, subtract it is basically give me that h i equals to summation of gamma j j equals to i to infinity divided by summation of gamma j j equals to 0 to infinity. So, finally, we have this particular uh, thing. So, the takeaway from this example again is to that I can solve this kind of problem using a system of linear equation as given by one of the theorem in the last lecture and then I have to basically solve it and when I am solving it I have to finally look for minimal non-negative solution uh, of the system of linear equation. And with that I stop here in this particular lecture. Thank you for listening.